Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Dr. Will D'Amport. Dr. Will, back on the podcast. I love it. So I had Dr. Will on the podcast uh, a while ago. I remember we actually talked about like a lot of fi financial literacy stuff and it was like really, really helpful. And I think, you know, something really uh, educators could benefit. So if you can check out the podcast that we did earlier, I lived in Canada at the time. So uh, I can't, I can't, I don't know, like I'm wearing shorts today and it's February. So this is uh, good here to be in Florida, but Dr. Will is from uh, Mississippi. So, and Dr. Will has a brand new book called The Edupreneur, Your Blueprint to Jumpstart and Scale Your Education Business. So Dr. Will, thanks for being on the podcast. Great to see you again, my friend. I, I Before we get into anything, I'm gonna ask you three questions, but I, a little pre-question, I guess. Tell us, just give us a quick, you know, one to two minute synopsis of your book, The Edupreneur, which is actually linked in the description down below. Uh, it is a book for that educator who is thinking about starting an education business. You, you know, whether you are thinking, hey, there's something I want to do greater, bigger outside of my classroom, or you've been to the conferences and you've seen the people on stage and you are inspired or you see things come through uh, your Twitter feed or whatever. And you're like, yo, I, I can do that, too. Mm. This book is going to give you that 411 on how do you go from idea to actually creating the business and all that goes into creating the business and how do you scale your business or get traction if you've already had one but you're not seeing mm -hmm. the progress you want to see well you know i i love that idea because i remember you know as um a teacher being at a conference i remember sitting there at a keynote, really in loving it. I'm like, man, that would be so cool. I'd love to do that one day. But I, and I just, but I didn't think it was actually, I didn't know that it was a thing, you know, like I just, it was weird because it was like people did that, but I didn't, you know, I never saw myself doing that. And then, and then that connected. Now, can I just clarify, are you still working in a school district as well? I am. I so you're am. not trying to, you're not trying to like get everyone to leave education. That's not what you're doing, right? It's just like, no, no. And they could. I'm not. Yeah, but I'm not even advocating. Not not one time is it mentioned in the book you should leave uh, your job. You know, so you could though, right? Like you know, you know, there, there. I, I, you know, it's funny because people say, um, you know, like I, I really focus on learning. I don't, I like in my work, I don't tell anyone how to teach. I, I don't think that's my place. All I really kind of focus on learning, share my ideas, but I always defer to the people that I'm speaking to. Is like you're the experts. I'm just sharing ideas with you, but you actually know your your, your people. Um, but there, you know, I think there's, there's different benefits of, you know, cause I get to see things that other people don't see, you know, like how school districts work. I take some of that experience back. So I don't think you're saying like, you need to leave or, Hey, it's bad if you do. I think it's just like, whatever works for each person. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I love it. Okay. So here are my three questions for you. And so right. the, the very first one is, so first of all, like, like, why did you write this book? Like, like when you're like, Hey, like why is this book so important for people in the in the realm of education right now because there are a lot of books out there that are business books written by folks who work in business but they do not come from our background they don't have our experiences in schools uh they don't have our experiences in the work that we do and so i wanted to write a book that spoke to us uh, because there are things in this book that I think are uh, relevant mm -hmm. to those of us who are, you know, we're, we're in the field, we're working in the, the schools, and this is something to where you will learn what you need to learn in business, and it and it'll make sense to you, right? So it's not business speak that you're you're trying to decipher or synthesize. So how do I make this fit into my world? Yeah. This book introduces business into our world in, in the language that we speak. Yeah. And that like, you know, kind of doing this for, you know, I've been kind of on my own for years, you know, involved with the field of education and the interesting thing, and I, I don't think people appreciate this as much as we let on is that every organization outside of education is trying to figure out how to learn better, which is like, do you know who could do a good job with that? Teachers, <laughs> like, teachers are probably gonna help you with that. So a lot of times I think that um, we always kind of look to businesses and take those ideas 
and try to like recreate them, revise them for education. And, you know, and I, I think, you know, business and education are two different things, but I do see the value in really kind of helping people understand some of the business aspects of this and what that actually looks like. And, you know, being thoughtful of, you know, how you kind of put yourself out there and, and share. So I, I, I think this is a, a great idea. Now I did ask you this, this question before, um, because I know I've dealt with this. I've mentored a lot of people who are working in this phase and there's kind of, sometimes they have like a foot in schools and they also are, you know, dabbling on this, whether it's speaking at conferences, you know, having their own business, all this other stuff. And there's a lot of people that a lot of districts that think this is a, no, you can't do that. You have to be like 100%. You can't do this stuff. And it's, you know, a kind of an old school mentality. Now I have thoughts on this too, but like when you're looking at this, one of the questions, you know, like is someone, a principal going to walk into a teacher reading this and say, what are you doing? Don't read that book. Like we don't want you leaving. But like, I think there's, there's power in uh, teaching these skills that could actually translate into what people are currently doing in their classrooms. And this is my belief. If it, if it takes away from your school, and if you're not a, as good a teacher, uh, I don't think principals, if you're a principal and you're out of school all the time speaking and you're not with a school, like if you're a superintendent and you're always gone and I don't think that's a good, I don't think that's good, but I know there's like, you know, there's opportunities there too, you know, um, how could this actually improve learning in schools? Like, how do you see that as being beneficial? Unleashes the individual power that each, each of us has. And, and what I mean by that is it is easy to get into a school district, uh, get into a field and become part of groupthink. And, mm -hmm. you know, and you're like, this is how things have always been done. You know, I'm just doing this. I'm going with the flow. I'm not here to rock the boat or not even think that it, it can be done any differently, any better. Mm -hmm. And when you become an entrepreneur and you are sharing your ideas to a bigger audience and you are, you know, you're tapping into your creativity, you're, you're risk taking, you're thinking about solutions that fuels you, that changes your mindset. Right. And with that change in mindset uh, comes a new way of thinking, a new way of doing where you are not limited or constrained by that group thing. You're, you're not in the side that box. You're not, beholden to old ideas and old ways of doing, but you're, you're really thinking about how can I do this differently? How can I do this better? And so when you have that mindset, uh, you can then bring that back into your classroom and figure out different ways. How do I engage my kids differently? How do I take these tools and use these in different ways to reimagine what I'm doing in my classroom? If you're leading teachers, how can I tap into their strengths? Mm -hmm. So that they themselves, right, are right. thinking out the box and they're not they're no longer afraid uh, to make a mistake. They're no longer afraid to think differently, to be creative, uh, to put themselves out there. And so this is where I think having that entrepreneurial mindset really comes into play to where teachers are free. Right. It frees them from thinking, I have to do it this way, but you don't. Right. You create your own avenues, your own lanes. You can do all of these things that will allow you to be a better person so that you don't become that person who you hate going to work every day. Right. Right. And, you know, it's funny because I I I was really blessed um, at the time to work in a school district that saw that I was starting to have outside opportunities and uh, we negotiated a part time uh, schedule for me. So I had to work a certain amount of days. And at first that was like a, a little bit of a struggle because it, it was something no one else was doing in our district, um, which I actually shouldn't say is totally true. People were doing things. They were having part-time contracts that they were doing out, like doing stuff outside of education. And that was totally fine. But if it's like, oh, if it's involved in education, you couldn't actually do that. And I remember having a conversation with my superintendent and talking about this and saying like, Hey, like, when I'm gone, I'm not like, I'm going to take a day off or, you know, one of my allocated days, you're not paying for anything, but here's a benefit of this. I'm going to actually be at a conference. I'm going to be at an event and I'm not just speaking at it. I'm going to go to sessions. I'm going to see stuff and 
I'm going to take those ideas and try to bring them back here. And you're going to pay zero dollars for that. And it's only going to benefit the school district. And so that was a real big mentality. And, and he saw that as a, a great, um, you know, concession, I guess, maybe, or trade off. And, and so the other part of this too, when schools say like, no, we don't want anyone like that. We don't want that. Are you attracting ambitious people? Right. And you know, if you like, uh, my former principal, I remember her saying this, someone was challenging her because a lot of her people would move on to different roles, move outside of, you know, um, maybe the school district and into other, and someone was bugging her and they were making fun of her. Like, Oh, you can't keep a teacher. And she said, I'd rather have a, an amazing teacher for one year than a, a bad one for 10. <laughs> I was like, that's a, that's a pretty good argument. Right. Mm-hmm. So it was like, what do you actually attract? Like, what do you attract? in your organization when they know they're helping people fulfill their dreams to actually, you know, uh, pursue things. And it's not saying that teaching is not a noble profession to pursue, but it's like everyone has different strengths and values. And, you know, the same way we cheer for kids, we should cheer for each other, cheer for adults. But sometimes there's the, oh, you're going to the dark side or you hate education or something like that. It's like, no, like we all have different gifts, right? And so, you know, we got to honor all of those things. All right, last question. So. You wrote this book, you have obviously a lot to share with the world, a lot to, um, you know, that they're going to learn from you. But what did you learn from writing this book? What was something that, you know, helped you become better through this process? Uh, uh, Self-reflection about what do I want to ultimately achieve and get out of this? And also, I had to question, you know, my own views and insights you know on education because as you again this is not just one of those books to where it's just all about go to your secretary of state and register your business but i do talk about niching down and coming up with a a signature offer and and branding and those things are about you looking at who you are and what you are and what you bring to the table what do you have to share with the world and in and and part of that including other people's voices in the book. I had to, you know, I wrote about my own self, my own journey about, you know, I didn't start out uh, to work in education, Mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, my, my first degree uh, is in film production. And I started from there, I started working in youth development programs and, that turned into what I am doing right now. Of course, I got a couple of graduate degrees along the way, but me being introspective and looking at where I've been, where I am now, where I want to go, I I learned about, you know, hey, you know, what is next uh, for me? Particularly when I'm looking at, you know, my current job, I'm looking at the education landscape, and I'm thinking about, well, where where do I fit in that now, especially now because I am so excited about people taking that next step. So even when I'm working, my own, we're working with my own teachers, it's about how can you be better, right? So it's not for me to just come in and tell you, do it this way. But when you're looking at what you doing, what's your jam that no one can do better than you? Mm-hmm. you know, how can you take what I take with, with your magic and make something special out of it? And, you know, just for me thinking about that, I mean, that's what I, what I learned uh, because it, it definitely is different when you're telling, right. you know, bringing pieces of yourself and your own story uh, out there. I love it. I love it. You know, um, I've been doing this for a while and it's interesting. People don't really know this about me. I actually own a publishing company. We publish our own books your book's not one of ours. And some people would actually not have you on because they would see it as a competition where I know, first of all, your publisher, I know Sarah, I know you work with Mandy, uh, Sarah, the teacher, I know with Mandy Frolic, I know you work with these, and these are really incredible people. And I always see this as that my focus has never been on crushing competition. It's about how do we actually uplift others? How do we up, actually uplift others? Because I think there's a space for everyone to create opportunities. So that's something that I'm really passionate about. I'm glad to uh, support, you know, a collaborative company uh, like EduMatch yourself because I know you're doing really great work and I know so many people are going to benefit from this. And, you know, a piece of advice um, as someone who's been doing this for a while, not for you, but for everyone listening, uh, the more you 
give out to others in these spaces, the more that, tend comes, that tends to come back to you. So I'm always glad to do that because I, I know I've, I've, be, I've benefited from so many others doing this work. So I'm glad that you're on. Congratulations to you. Uh, congratulations to Edumatch for snagging you and getting you to write this book. So um, everyone, check out Edupreneur. It is in the link below. It is now available. Uh, Dr. Will, appreciate you, man. Thanks for taking the time. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, have a wonderful day, everyone.